Good morning, good morning, amazing people. I hope you're enjoying this cold as I am. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl, Jerry Kabiru. As usual, Jerry Wakafiro. This morning, I want to show you how to make all DIY, do it yourself, this amazing coffee table. And I want to take you through the whole process where I got the glass every detail if you have any question you leave it down on the description box welcome to the most leading diy channel in east and central africa if you're new here consider subscribing to the most amazing channel in east and central africa then turn on your notification bell yes click it on so that you get to know when i put up a new video now on this video i'm making this tire table so the first thing you need is paint People keep on inboxing me. Please do not inbox me. Leave your, your question on the comment section because it helps to grow my channel. Which paint I do use? I use synthetic dry, fast dry paint. Synthetic fast dry paint. Keep, don't forget to say fast dry. You need the fast dry because it dries fast and you can move on to the next project. Where do I get these paints? Near a car garage. Anywhere where there's a car garage, just go and ask for fast dry synthetic paint and it's best to when it comes to painting tires and DIYs for me. So the first coat of my paint, I make sure it is thick. It's really hard to spread a thick paint, but you do not want to take too long in a project. So I use just a thick paint. It might leave bumps and, you know, overlayer, overlayered of paints but it will smoothen out when it comes to the second and the third coat coat of paint so as you can see i'm just trying to spread out the white and then i'm going to take a break for about 40 minutes and this is my second layer the second layer i made sure i added thinner you can see it dripping because it's a bit light just a little bit but then also when it comes to wood wood soaks in paint that's why you need to start with a thick paint the second layer make it a bit lighter and then we will go to the third layer sometimes i even go to the fourth and fifth layer depending on the piece how it reacts to paint because also when you take this or when i take this to my clients i want to make sure it's something that they are happy about for this specific uh, piece cable roll wood i went three layers of paints or i used three layers of paints to apply on it so once I put it aside, I took my tire. My tire, I had painted it turquoise before. And to go from turquoise to yellow, it's go it was going to be a long process because it's dark color and light color. So for me, I decided to use white as an undercoat just to lighten the tire. And then once I apply yellow, it was going to be much more better and quicker than just going from turquoise blue to yellow. When it comes to tire, I make sure my my paint is not as thick as the wood but also it's not light for the first coat but for this specific white i went, went only one coat so i used it a little bit when it was a little bit thick and after the the uh, the white coat then i definitely went directly to yellow after it dried so the white coat i applied and then gave it at least an hour the reason why i gave it at least an hour is that by the time i went to yellow i wanted to make sure it was totally dry dry now i took back my cable roll i'm making the third i'm painting the third coat the third coat is technically a lot of thinner first you want your piece to shine you see it's shining it's coming out shiny and also the thinner helps to spread out any accumulated paint that kind of formed some lumps or to spread out the paint to look very even you would think it's a machine that just painted this piece so far if you have a question please please leave it on the comment section and if you don't have a question just leave a comment down below um, share this video with a friend of a friend and another friend i make these pieces to sell if you can do it by yourself that's okay but if you would like to get this piece it's only 15,000 kenyan shilling yes kenyan shilling you give a down payment i do your work and during the delivery or by the time you pick it up you can finish the other part so i'm going now into the yellow the yellow it was easy because i had already painted the white the yellow i went two layers it was a light um, I had added thinner because 
my tire was already bright color. And for those who would like to do something with yellow, by the way, it takes a lot of paint because it's a very tricky color. It's actually more tricky than white. It spreads out on its own very easily. So we are going to leave it to dry overnight, all the pieces. And the next day or the next morning, what I'm doing, I'm going to take you to where I bought the glass. So this is the glass place. It's in CBD. If you want their contacts, just reach out to me on the comment section. I will give it out. So when you're going to buy a glass, first take the measurements of your tire. Do not just buy a glass without taking the measurements. A diameter. Do you remember diameter in school? One side to the other side was the diameter. So when you buy the glass, it's usually in square, square form. Then they cut out the diameter. So there it goes, they used turpentine to create the surface on what they were going to cut. And then after that, he's just going to remove the square part and is left with the round, round glass. This glass specifically is called one way. It's six millimeters thick. It's good for the table. The table usually I use six millimeters or five millimeters. I do not go less than that. I do not take four millimeters because it will be too light for your table. Too light to a point where it, if it's hit, then it breaks. Now he's making um, holes where the um, screw will go through. Even that, I do take the diameter. I do take the diameter of my tire from one side to the other where I want the holes to land. Then I explain to these guys, I'm like, now take this diameter and make holes from one side to the other they did a good job after cutting the glass drilling the next thing is that he smoothens the edges so that it, it is not sharp to cut anyone and it gives the glass a nice finishing look an amazing finishing look by the way for the one-way glass there are different colors um, my client wanted this one so it's a blue one way you see, one side is blue, the other side is dark. So the blue is what I will use on the top. And by the way, guys, this project takes days. It doesn't take one day. So when I got home, I had left my tire and cable roll together. I found them attached as the paint was drying, which is still good. So I took my screw, MDF screw, and when I'm screwing them, I am mindful on the other side, it doesn't show. So that's why you see me screwing more on the edge instead of going more deeper in because then it will show from the other side so what i did i did put like eight screws i i usually put screws until i feel i'm satisfied like this thing is well attached um but at the same time if it's somewhere that you it will show you you want to be careful you don't show too much screws on the other side so we're going to now put the glass on top. Yay! The glass, before you put it on top, make sure you clean it up. Those are the screws that I use. They are called glass screw. So when you're buying the glass, just remember to buy the glass screw. They have a head which gives your work nice finishing. So you will see me being very careful. When I have the glass and I'm trying to screw, I'm very careful. So what I do, I just push the screw in just a few inches in, then remove it, remove the glass. Then I'm using the MDF screw to create a hole and I do not push it all the way to the end because I do not want my hole to be so wide not to fit the other screw. So I'm just creating holes right now. And then I'll take, I took my glass, put it back together. Remember, I cleaned my glass underneath so that it doesn't look very crazy. So now I'm using the glass screw and I'm going to screw it with using my hands. I'm not going to use the drill. The reason is that you need to be just careful when it comes to glass. Even now I'm putting my finger fingers underneath just to protect it so i usually push it at the same time instead of putting one screw and then uh going to the other side just in case the other side is not aligned so i usually do it halfway halfway and then when you screw your glass do not put too much pressure on it do not make it too tight 
it's not good for the glass glass does not like pressure you know we should learn from it it doesn't like pressure it likes to just have its own capacity of surviving like don't make it too loose don't make it too tight that's how it is so i'm just putting the head of the screws on both sides and there it is our table is done please let me know what you think about this look it from the head to the toe look at it look at it and it's a one way you know there is the top can you see the screws no they are well hidden so i am done with this project for now i'm just placing the glass in case you want to know how i'm going to decorate this bottle for my client watch out for the next video i'm going to show you every process there are the yarns i'm using the every tool that i'm using so stay tuned for the next video i hope you really enjoyed give this video a thumbs up don't forget to leave a comment and until the next video i'm going to say ciao bye bye enjoy your day